we first started, we didn't know much about towing. Well, Mark towed boats, but never an RV, and certainly nothing as big as this. It is, it's like moving an apartment building. Did you see that? The, I can't believe that just happened. Is that not the most massive thing you've ever seen? <laughs> Using the odometer in the trucks we've owned, we've racked up 257,000 miles, visiting most of the lower 48, Alaska, Canada, Mexico, and New Zealand. Nebraska and Hawaii, we're looking at you. The cows are crossing, and we got a front row seat for this. Over the years, we've had several RVs from Ginger, Grand Ginger, Toy Ginger, Outdoor Ginger, for an entire three months. You know, what? memories don't have to like put you on the verge of tears. <laughs> you can do easy things too. <laughs> but I guess that's not the motto in this family. Platinum Ginger and a 1984 Bluebird Wander Lodge that we simply called The Bird. And she took us all the way down Route 66. If you want to check out The Bird, we donated her to the RV Hall of Fame Museum in Elkhart, Indiana. And if you're in the area, be sure to say hi to Gary. This is Gary, the Gemini giant, wishing you smooth. This is our 14th trip across America, and we thought that during this trip, we'd focus on tips for towing. Specifically, how fast is too fast to tow? But don't just take it from us. We reached out to JD from Big Truck, Big RV. You know, when I'm towing a fifth wheel, I, uh, my heart limit is about six. Ken Brooks from Airstream Trippin'. Uh, because I want to arrive alive. <laughs> and so. And we met up with Eric and Tammy with Techno RV in person. Look, I'm so excited about trying to watch you back in. I can't hardly stand <laughs> But first, let's hook up and hit the road. Hello? Hey, JD, Mark and Trish, how are you? What's going on, Mark and Trish? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys doing? We are in your neck of the woods, kind of. Well, we're in Texas, but we're not too far away. You know, Texas is twice the size of Germany, so if you say you're in my neck of the woods, that can be a very broad statement. <laughs> so the reason for the call is we're, we're getting some input on how fast is too fast to tow. And I'm calling people in the know, and I wanted your thoughts on that topic. All right. So my thoughts on how fast it is too fast to tow. So this is an interesting topic because for me, it varies when I'm towing something recreationally, when I'm towing something for work, or when I'm towing something that's that's kind of sketchy or scary to tow in the first place. Yeah. Um, you know, when I'm towing a fifth wheel, I my heart limit is about 67 miles an hour. About 67 is where... You know, when I get faster than that, I feel like, I just feel like I'm going faster than I should be going. So, so 67 is about where I stay. But if I'm towing my, my gooseneck with an excavator on the back or a tractor on the back, you know, the fastest I'll go might be like 57 or 60 yeah. at the fastest because when you're, when you have to secure something down with straps or, or binders and chains, that feeling of sketchiness is just always tingling in the back of your mind. Is, is a binder or a chain or a strap going to come loose? So, yeah, for me, again, it, it really comes down to what I'm specifically towing. When it's RVs, I, I really don't like to go faster than 67 because I feel as if it puts undue wear and tear on your tires. Yeah. It generates more heat than, than you probably need to. You know, what I, what I like about that is I think a lot of people who are new to RVing assess, or maybe pulling a trailer, assess of how it feels when they're towing and they get up to 75 miles per hour and they go, hey, this the truck is doing great or even an SUV, it's doing great. And they think that is the barometer for towing fast without really a consideration for what happens if a gust of wind comes or if we just went over a pothole that was pretty big or if the, the freeway suddenly stops. That is a whole different situation as to what's gonna happen when you've gotta get yourself an emergency situation. Oh, you're totally right. You know, the fact is that most people are, are they're even skeptical on if they set up their trailer brakes properly or how to do it properly. So once you start getting up to highway speeds, especially in these, these newer, more powerful trucks that have these outrageous claims in terms of maximum towing numbers and things, you, you know, you know this as well as I do, when you guys had your toy hauler, you always know it's back there even though you're cruising and you don't necessarily feel it. But the minute you have to hit your brakes or the minute somebody in front of you does something that makes you question if you're too close or, or how you can maneuver around something, you instantly know you have that weight pushing on you. Yeah. And uh, I know you guys did the, the, the disc brake upgrade, but even then, 
Yeah. Where it doesn't matter. You have a ton of mass behind you yeah. that's going to push on you. And, and the thing for me is is maintaining 60, 70, 75 miles an hour isn't too difficult for newer trucks. But you're sure going to wish you weren't going that fast if you have to stop. It's always good to talk to JD. And if you're looking for content on truck and RV reviews he and, and technical information, he does a great job with that. So go check out Big Truck, Big RV. Now, before we go to Ken Dog, I want to chat real quick about some tips towing as it relates to tow haul, cruise control, and a brake controller. Uh, just as long as we're talking about towing, I thought it might be helpful. Uh, obviously, when I tow, I tow with the tow haul button on and because that changes when the truck shifts and it also uses engine braking when I come to a stop. But um, regarding cruise control, when we had a F-150 gasser, I didn't use cruise control while towing very often, unless if I was maybe at speed on a flat road, because if this if the road kind of went up just a, ever so slightly, gas trucks just want to keep you at that speed, and the RPMs would fly up to 4,000, and it was loud, and I just didn't like it, not to mention it was a, a colossal waste of fuel. But diesel trucks, on the other hand, um, they hardly downshift at all, and so it's very rare that, that my truck would, would downshift, and even if it does, it tends to do it kind of seamlessly and um, if I can if I had cruise control towing at 65 miles per hour we started going up a grade it would just simply go up that grade and it would hardly downshift so I use cruise control all the time when we move to a diesel but adaptive cruise control can sometimes be a problem if you're towing long distances like right now because you're at, we're, let's say we're in the right lane and I've got cruise control on at 65 and I and I happen to be behind a semi truck and and um, you know that if the trucks going 55 I don't know the difference I could be going you know slow across the country without really realizing it so what I've done to combat that is I go into the uh, to the computer here and I display the digital speedometer that way it's a little easier for me to see exactly how fast I'm going and it, it, it prompts me to go oh hey look at my we're only going 55 and then I'll just I'll pass the other kind of neat thing about um, at least super duties is when I put my blinker on the truck actually starts accelerating uh, just by putting the blinker on to go around as I pass. Um, okay, last tip about a brake controller. Um, you know, this setup is set up perfectly balanced and we hardly ever have a sway issue. But if there was a huge gust of wind or something on the road conditions were to initiate some sort of sway, it is critical if you're towing anything that you've got a brake controller. And the Super Duty and the, and the Ford F-150s I've had, they've always had a built-in OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer, brake controller. If uh, you don't have one of those, you can easily install an aftermarket brake controller, but I cannot tell you how important it is to have one of these if you're towing a trailer. And if there's a sway event at all, the best thing to do is to immediately go down there and uh, depress your brake controller, and that will straighten out your trailer really quick before it turns into something that maybe you can't control. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows that for towing safety. Now let's get Kenny Brooks on the phone to hear what he has to say about towing speeds. Buenas noches, senora and senora. <laughs> <laughs> How are you and Cheryl doing? Oh, we're doing fabulous, baby. How are you guys doing? Where y'all at, man? We're in Texas and we got some important towing questions for you, but let's just get right to the, let's just cut right to the chase. When we first met in the Tetons, you said no kids, no dogs, not even a goldfish. No Wait. kids, no dogs, we don't even have a goldfish. So, how's the dog doing? One of the great things about us is things are always subject to change without notice. <laughs> and, and Honey Boo is just, I mean, we couldn't have asked for a better, we couldn't have found a better little pooch. She's awesome. All right, I cannot I wait to get Honey Boo and Charlie together. They're gonna, they're gonna fall in love. I think they will. I think Charlie's gonna have his heart stolen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So listen, I, I think I know how. I think I know where you stand on this. But I'm doing a video on how fast is too fast to tow, and I'm calling some experts. You're on the list. I know you're pulling an Airstream, a 33 Classic with an F350 Dually. How fast is too fast to tow, Kenny Brooks? 70 miles an hour. All right, that's too fast, so how fast do you tow? 65, 60, 65. 60, 65. Do you ever go over 65? Never. Never? Why do you not tow over 65? Uh, because I want to arrive alive. <laughs> and so, 
I, I always leave myself enough time for traffic jams, traffic accidents, and let's say I get a flat tire or I have a mishap, I don't want to have to cut myself to the bone and force myself in a situation where I endanger my wife and now honey boo. <laughs> All right, well, it doesn't get more straightforward than that. You know, the other component to that is, you know, the, the whole quotient of time speed distance. I mean, you're speeding, you need time to stop, and that time that it takes you to stop, you're still going to be covering distance before you come to a complete stop. Yeah. If you don't, you know, get involved in some sort of a situation, you know, most people are towing too fast with one hand on the steering wheel and talking, uh, listening to a podcast or chewing bubble gum and, you know, not really paying attention. And that's how you don't allow yourself a chance to see debris or obstructions in the lane that you're traveling because you're going so fast, things are going by so fast, you get tunnel vision and you're not looking, uh, you're not driving as attentively as you should be. Hey, Charlie. Charlie, you're gonna get together with Honey Boo. Isn't that fun? I try, he's so excited. I can't wait. All right, Ken Dog is always fun to catch up with, and I appreciate his perspective on safety, as always. Uh, you know, a couple years ago we did a video, and we have this hashtag called Slow is Pro. It is true. When things have gone wrong for us, most of the time it's because of a hurried mindset. Uh, so Slow is Pro, but now we have a new hashtag arrive alive <laughs> which is great okay so we are headed down across this country but we are going to be uh, coming down into mobile alabama and if you're familiar with eric and tammy with techno rv that is where they are located and we're going to swing in and uh, catch up with them but i also want eric's perspective on how fast is too fast to tow when it comes to a motorhome they have a tiffin uh, motorhome and a truck camper because he had an f-350 with a truck camper so let's get some thoughts from eric on his perspective on towing you're just gonna, uh, it's gonna be like fitting a greased BB in between, like, <laughs> like something that's not supposed to fit there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you look great. Come on back. Come on back if you. If he hits my house, we should have enough footage for the deposition. But for right now, we're talking about how fast is too fast to tow. And the reason I wanted to chat with you is because you are kind of a class A guy. Yes and you have truck camper experience. I do. So how fast is too fast to tow when it comes to a motorhome? Well, I'm impressed that you drove 1,500 miles to ask me that question, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> but, uh, so, all right, in a motorhome, uh, first of all, there's the speed limit, right? And mm -hmm. it'd be nice if you could just go to the speed limit, but you know, you get up on I-90 in North Dakota and the speed limit's 80, and I don't yeah. feel comfortable with that, right? Yeah. And then there's the thing where tires have speed limits mm -hmm. and then you, you don't want to exceed that. But if you take all that out of the way, like honestly, in my opinion, it, it just comes down to your comfort level and kind of common sense. So in a motor home, uh, you're basically, the feeling that you have in a motor home is very real to what's going on on the road. Like I've towed trailers before and what I see on trailers is that you're in a comfortable truck mm -hmm. and you're, what you're towing is having mm -hmm. a much different experience than what you're having in the truck, <laughs> That's a right? great point. In a motorhome, you're kind of feeling everything, yeah. right? So for me, like if you just ask me like interstate speeds, I was always around 65 miles an hour. So again, I go back to what's your comfort level and what's your setup that you have because in the beginning I had a Jeep that I noticed in my camera it was it was mm. wobbling back and forth. Yeah. Well, I didn't feel comfortable with that. I wasn't even doing 65 then. Yeah. I made some adjustments, got more comfortable with my setup, and then I could mm. do 65, 67, or something like that, and I felt very comfortable with that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's the thing. It's just like the other side of of it is you know if people that get too comfortable, mm -hmm. then they can start thinking they're Superman, right? Yeah. And that's the people that you see. I mean, I'm not trying to call anybody out, but yeah. you know, if somebody's doing 80 miles an hour in a motorhome towing something, like to me, it's like, yeah, I don't know if I'm, I wouldn't be comfortable with yeah. it. Yeah, well, here comes an Allegro bus blowing by me. Careful, careful. I'm going 60. He is not going 60. Yeah, well, things happen. And that's what I think people who are new to RVing, they haven't had things happen yet. Correct. If you do this long enough, you realize that things happen. People turn out in front of you. They cars come out in front. They don't. They don't consider how how long it takes us for us to stop. Yeah. And when those things happen, you 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 get that experience where you realize, oh, I need to leave myself a lot of buffer. 
Okay, but I have no experience. This is probably one of the only rigs we don't really have any experience with is a truck camper. Yeah. How does all that weight on the bed of your truck impact your speeds with that? The, the truck camper, and we only did this for a short time, was probably the most uncomfortable I've ever been. Like honestly, and then I had my truck set up with the extra suspension and the airbags and all that. And I know all the truck camper guys out there, you know, have all kinds of tricks to this. Mm -hmm. But the top heaviness of that is is real. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you're doing this mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and so I'll go back to I guess what I said about the Class A. Whatever rig you're in, you need to do what's comfortable for you and still be safe on the road. Yeah. I mean, if the speed limit's 65, you don't want to be doing like 20. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So in the truck camper, I can tell you that, uh, you know, my top speed was not 65. I just didn't feel comfortable with yeah. that. It was probably more 58, mm -hmm. 60. Um, as you know, I've had a I had a blowout in in my yep. Class A. Yeah. Kind of getting back to that, and I can tell you, if I'd have been on uh, I-90 going through North Dakota where the speed limit was 80. If I'd have been doing 80, that'd have been a much different yeah. experience doing that. And so how fast were you going when you got the blowout? 65. 65. Yeah, I was doing 60. And that was, I wish I'd have been doing like 30. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, but, the, there's a big difference between 55 and 65. Big and when, difference. when we went to Alaska and we rolled into Toke, Alaska, and the guy said, how you doing? I said, I'm doing great. He says, oh, I could tell you took your time to get here. He says, because when people step out of their motorhome or their RV and they look tired, they just kind of sped there. Right. And it does, it changes your attitude. It changes, and, and, yeah. and Alaska is actually where we saw the evidence uh, that people with towables were not thinking that I'm in this big F-250 that's kind of a luxury ride, right? Yeah. It eats the terrain up. Yeah. <laughs> and, but your, your, your camper back there is not eating the yeah. terrain up. It's, it's taking a beating. Mm -hmm. And we saw that over and over and over again in Alaska. Yeah. So, not good. All right, I appreciate your input. Uh, thanks for keeping that to two minutes. <laughs> <laughs>